It's Hop Along Cassidy. With action and suspense, out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy. This famous hero thrills his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hopalong Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And now, another exciting story of the early West, The Whistling Ghost. Hoppy and California are on their way back from the state capital up north after taking care of some Bar 20 business. California, who used to live in this territory, has talked Hoppy into taking a shortcut to Elbow Creek where they plan to spend the night before they finish the ride down to the Bar 20 the next day. They should have been in Elbow Creek hours ago, but California's shortcut has taken a lot longer than he expected. Oh, Dad, burn it, Hoppy. Now I went and got us lost. If I'd knowed I was taking us the long way around, I'd have kept my mouth shut tighter than a sprung bear trap. Oh, we're not lost, California. We just don't know where we are. Well, I ought to know. I practically growed up in Elbow Creek. Mm-hmm. Hey, hold on a minute. Yep, right up here is Paddy Bowman's cabin. A uh, friend of yours? Friend? Oh, why, Paddy and me was like brothers once. Say, Hoppy, why don't we bunk there tonight, huh? He'd be glad to put us up. That's a good idea. I could sure use some sleep. And by golly, I could sure use some supper. Oh, boy. Bacon, beans. Always hungry. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, there didn't seem to be in his cabin. No light, no smoke in the chimney. Listen. Yeah. That's Patty. That's the way he always used to whistle. That's his tune. I, I'd know it anywhere. Boy, oh, he's in the ravine down there. Let's get down and meet him. Uh, uh, Patty! Patty Bowman! Uh, uh, what kind of hospitality is that? He's a shooting at us. Hey, Patty! It's me, California Carlson, your old friend! Hey! Them last two shots was close. Well, I'm glad that last one wasn't any closer. Come on, let's get over behind the cabin. Yeah, I'm right with you, Hoppy. Oh, oh, Patty must be out of his head. Shooting at us like this. Wait, look up there. He's riding off over the hill. See him? Where? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I see him all right. Did you see that horse? Red and gold skewball stallion. Yeah, big, too. Well, no chance of catching him now. Come on, let's get in at town. Yep, this is it. Terrible Creek. Ain't changed a bit. Uh, that's the palace bar over there. Uh, let's go in. I'm thirsty. How about you, California? <laughs> <laughs> For a non-drinking man, you sure do have an awful hard time passing a bar. <laughs> Howdy. What do you have, stranger? I ain't no stranger. I practically grow it up around here. Why... California Carlson, as I live and breathe. <laughs> glad to see you again, Mike. Uh, and this is my partner, Hop Along Cassidy. Well, glad to know you. Hi, Mike. Make that a couple of sarsaparillas, will you, Mike? Well, now, what kind of celebration is that? <laughs> oh, well, you boys look like you can hold your drinks. Two sarsaparillas. Hey, you might answer a couple of questions for us, Mike. Well, sure. Glad to if I can. You say, what's come over my old friend Paddy Bowman? Has he gone crazy or something? He just now shot at us as we was coming in. What? California? You must be the one that's crazy. Paddy Bowman was murdered two months ago. Now back to Hopalong Cassidy and the Whistling Ghost. On their way to Elbow Creek, Hoppy and California stopped by the cabin of California's old friend, Patty Bowman. 
They thought they heard Patty whistling from down in the ravine, but the bartender says Patty has been dead for two months. While they're talking to the bartender, another man steps over to join them. Evening, Sheriff. What'll it be? Uh, I heard you fellas talking about Patty Bowman. Uh, mind if I join you? I'm the sheriff here. Downey's the name. Uh, sheriff, uh, you remember California Carlson, don't you? This is Hopalong Cassidy. Oh, howdy, howdy, Sheriff. Hi, Sheriff. Uh, is Patty really dead like this fellow says, Sheriff? Yeah, yeah, he is. He was found up in his cabin about two months ago. Somebody tortured him and then killed him. I'd sure like to catch the varmint who did it, too. We all like Patty around here. Well, if that wasn't Patty Bowman we heard up there, then who was it? And some folks around here think it's Patty's ghost. The whistling ghost, they call him. Shows up every two, three nights. Been around for a couple of weeks now, more or less. Well, for a ghost, he was doing some mighty real shooting. Oh, they was real bullets, all right. Takes a few shots at anybody that pokes around up there. I don't guess you got a good look at him, did you? None of us have. Ah, uh, we got a pretty good look at his horse, Sheriff. Oh? Well, now we're getting someplace. Uh, come on, I want to hear all about this. Sure, oh, Sheriff. Yeah. Ain't no sense talking in a crowded bar. Now, uh, about this horse. He was the prettiest red and gold ski ball stallion I ever saw. And he was big, too. Yeah. I know which corral that skewball stallion ought to be in right now. You fellas think you'd know it if you saw it again? Well, I'm sure we would. All right. Let's get over there. Whose place is this, Sheriff? A fellow by the name of Slade. Slade? Oh, I remember him. Tall, black-haired Dutchman with bright, squinty eyes. Uh, runs the assay office. Is that Slade, all right. Well, here's the corral. Good thing the moon's out. Yeah, where's the red stallion? All I see is bays, chestnuts, and mustangs. There he is, over there by the shed. That's the one. Hey, let's go over and see if he's winded. Uh, he's not only winded, this horse has worked up a ladder. Slade must have ridden him pretty fast to get back here. Well, do we have a talk with Mr. Slade now? Well, uh, I don't know. Maybe it wouldn't do as much good at that. What's the trouble, Sheriff? Well, I... Cassidy, I don't like to admit I'm a beaten man, but Slade's won every trick so far. I guess he's just about got me buffalo. How come? Well, he's Mr. Big around here. Practically owns Elbow Creek. If I accuse Slade of something I can't prove, I'm out. He'll see to that. Just what are you trying to prove? Well... I think Slade is the whistling ghost, and I think the whistling ghost killed Patty. I've got plenty of reasons for thinking so, but I don't know how to make it stick. I got a little score to settle with him myself, Sheriff. I've heard a lot about you, Cassidy. When I was standing there in the palace bar a while ago and heard California mention your name, I said to myself, that's Providence. There's help when I need it most. But, well, now I don't know. Pretty big thing to ask of you to help me out on this. Hoppy, if anybody can catch him, you can. I sure wish you would, Hoppy. Patty was a friend of mine. All right, California. I guess any friend of yours is a friend of mine. Looks like the Bar 20 will have to get along without us for a few days more. Well, that's fine. Hey, why don't you fellas come on over to the house for supper? Yeah, supper? Thank well, you. That's we a will. good idea. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> About ready for dessert? We got three kinds of pie, apple, mince meat, and custard. Now there's three reasons why I wish I was a married man. <laughs> apple, mince meat, and custard. Oh my goodness. Well, I'll just have to give you one of each, I guess. I'll fetch it out in the kitchen. Well, I guess we're about ready to get down to business, Sheriff. I'd like to get all the facts on this. Well, that's why I asked Ben Clayton to come over. Yep, between us, I think we can give you the whole picture, Cassidy. That'll be a great help. Well, Ben can tell you more about Patty than almost anybody. He was close friends ever since Ben set up his law practice here. Just what have you got on, uh, Slade, Sheriff? Enough to hang anyone but a man as big as he is. Well, we've got three witnesses saw him go up to Patty's ranch the afternoon he was killed. But when I asked Slade about that, he said he hadn't been near there. Denied the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And what about your whistling ghost? Well, you saw the horse he was riding. Yeah, Sheriff and I rode up to Patty's place about a week ago. We both heard this whistling ghost, but he got away. And where was Slade at that time? He said he was in the back room of his office, working late. 
Nobody saw him there. Nobody even saw him leave. Three times when the whistling ghost was up there, Slade was in his back room working. He said. You left out one big thing, Sheriff. Hey, what's that? Motive. Well, for one thing, Slade and Patty were out for years. What about? Gold. One man had it and another wanted it, huh? Well, not exactly. Patty toted some diggings into the assay office, oh, about 15 years ago. Slade told him it was fool's gold. Yeah, iron pyrites. Looks like gold, you find it the same way, but it's not worth the trouble of carrying it to the assay office. That's right. Patty said Slade was lying and he wouldn't have anything more to do with Slade. Well, that's why Patty's wife left him, wasn't it? Yep. Packed up, went right back east. Yeah, took their kid with her, too. I remember. I guess the boy was six or seven years old then. Yeah, she said Patty was a fool and it would just like him to wind up with fool's gold. Well, are you talking about Patty still? Oh, he did take it off hard when his wife left him. Figured she wouldn't have done it if it hadn't been for Slade and that fool gold business. Well, here's the pie. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy, does that look good. Uh, Clayton, speaking as his lawyer, what happens to Patty's ranch now that he's dead? Uh, I wrote to his family, but they haven't even answered. I imagine they'll want to sell. You know, some folks say the whistling ghost is haunting the ranch, so he can get the price down and buy it cheap. Has anyone been trying to buy the ranch since Patty is killed? Uh, yes, Slade. He came to my office and made me an offer a few days ago. My theory is Patty wouldn't sell, so Slade killed him, expecting to pick up the ranch cheap after Patty was dead. But why does he want it if there's no gold up there? That's just what I'd like to know. I searched Patty's cabin from top to bottom after he was killed, and I didn't find a thing. I think we'd better ask the whistling ghost what he's after. Oh, oh I can see it coming. We're a-going ghost hunting. Well, now, he's not always up there just when you want him. Clayton rode up with me several times, but we only heard him that once. That's right. Suppose I stop by and have a little talk with Slade in the morning. And while I'm at it, I'll give the Whistling Ghost a special invitation to our party. Now back to Hopalong Cassidy and the Whistling Ghost. <laughs> While riding through Elbow Creek, California learns that his old friend Patty Bowman has been murdered. So now, Hopalong and California are digging their spurs into fresh trouble trying to run down the murderer. The sheriff suspects that the whistling ghost who haunts Patty's cabin is none other than Mr. Slade, owner of the assay office. So now, Hopalong and California are calling on the Dutchman to see if they can't pick up a few interesting facts. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? I'm looking for Mr. Slade. He's busy in back right now. Couldn't I help him? I'm looking for some information. There's a piece of property around here that's for sale, I understand. I know what's on top of the ground. Now I want to find out what's under it. Well, what property are you interested in? Patty Bowman's place. I see you know something about it. I... Yes, I've heard Mr. Slade speak of it. I think maybe he'd want to handle this himself. Lorraine? Go tell Mr. Slade a man is here asking about Patty Bowman's ranch. All right, Mr. Archer. I'll go get him right now. Well, the gold business must be pretty good around here. This is quite an office staff. Oh, if somebody finds a little gold now and then. Mr. Slade and Lorraine ran the office till lately. I'm just learning the business. Archer, get me that folder on the rainbow mine. Yes, sir. Where is it? It's in the top drawer where all the folders are. How long is it going to take you to learn where things are? You were here three weeks now. You can't even sharpen a pencil without asking me how to do it. I don't know why I hired you in the first place. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, quit picking on him. He's trying. You stay out of this. What are you doing back here, anyway? Well, I just came back to tell you there's two gentlemen up front asking about Patty Bowman's ranch. Why didn't you say so? Well... California Carlson. Yeah, howdy, Slade. Uh, this is my partner, Hopalong Cassidy. Oh. Uh, hi. What can I do for you, fellows? I'm looking for some information about the Patty Bowman Ranch. Why ask me about it? You're running the essay office. You ought to know all about the property around here. I want to know if there's gold on the ranch. Oh, sure. <laughs> Fool's gold. Plenty of it. Is there any other real stuff? I told Patty Bowman 15 years ago that all he had was fool's gold. What I said then still stands. Then how come you want to buy the place? 
Did you come in here to ask questions about your business or my business? Maybe your business is my business, Slade. A man riding a skewball stallion just uh, like yours shot at us last night. That makes it my business. No, wait a minute. I'm talking. The whistling ghost was out last night up at Patty Bowman's place. He was riding a horse that looked mighty like your horse. Just what are you getting at, Cassidy? That red stallion didn't work up a ladder between this office and the corral at your house. If you want to stay healthy, Cassidy, keep your nose out of my business. And stay off my property, too. Now get out of here. I haven't finished, Slade. If you're going to get tough, you'd better be able to back it up. Maybe this will convince you. No! That'll get you nowhere, Slade. Get up, boy, Hoppy! That was a mistake, Cassidy. You haven't got anything on me. Somebody's after something up there, Slade. We're pulling that ghost act to scare everybody else away. I don't scare that easy. You've got everything figured out, haven't you? Slade, I've got a pretty good idea what's hidden up there, and I'm going to find it tonight, ghost or no ghost. If you think I'm the whistling ghost, you're crazy. I've got my own theory about who that is. I'll bet you have. Come on, California. We've had our say. Let's get out of here. Sure, Hoppy. What are you going to do, Hoppy? We're going to ask the sheriff to go up to Patty's ranch with us tonight. We'll get Clayton to come along. We fan out. The ghost can't shoot at all of us at once. One of us will catch him. I want to find out what he's after. Well, I thought you knew. You you just said that you even knew where it was. That was bait, California. Bait. Mm -hmm. We want to be sure our whistling ghost is up there tonight. So I just gave him an invitation to our party. And uh, California. Yeah? This is going to be a surprise party for a lot of people. Over there. See? I don't think we're near enough yet. Now, this is foolish. Are we just going to ride up together and let him pick us off like clay pigeons? No, we'll fan out. Well, let's do it, then. That's him. Down in the ravine there. Well, I'll head left from here and cut down to the ravine. Uh, let's separate and get down there. Uh, what do you want me to do, Hoppy? Let's go straight down to that cove. Keep your eyes open and don't miss a thing. we got to work fast or somebody will get more than he bargained for tonight. Hey, listen. He's whistling again. Hoppy, somebody got him. Come on, let's get down there. He's down here somewhere. Here he is, over here, Sheriff. Ah, let's get this handkerchief off his face. There, son. How do you feel? Who is it? Who was shot? Well, that's Archer, Slade's new assistant. Let's get him up to the cabin and see what we can do for him. That'll stop the bleeding. You feel better? Yeah. Thanks a lot. I'll lie back and rest. What's he doing up here? This is your whistling ghost, Sheriff. Archer? But Slade's the whistling ghost. Ain't you got one ghost too many, Hoppy? No, California. Archer is the only whistling ghost around here. Yeah, but Cassidy, I... He was up here trying to trap Slade. You see... Archer is Patty Bowman's son. Patty's boy? Patty's well, be... son, Davy? Davy Bowman? Wait, he didn't kill Patty, did of he? Of course he didn't, Sheriff. He was trying to trap his father's killer. That's why he was playing Whistling Ghost. You, you mean we're looking for two people? That's right. We've got our Whistling Ghost, but we still have to catch our killer. Slade must have followed me up here a while ago. I guess he almost got me the way he got my father. But Hoppy, we saw the whistling ghost on Slade's horse, remember? Davy borrowed Slade's horse to come up here. Yeah, but what was the big idea? He was using himself as bait, figuring the man who killed his father would see through the ghost act and come after him. That's right, and I could trap him when he came after me. And another reason he hung around up here was to keep people away from the cabin while he was searching it. Isn't that right, Davy? <laughs> A lot of good it did, too. I guess Dad was just kidding me in that last letter. Why? What did your father write you, Davy? Well, he was going to sell the place and come east to live with me. Is that all? Well, he said he had been going over his records, and he thought he could get a pretty good price for the ranch, considering what he'd taken out of it so far. 
Just as I thought. The way he wrote it, it sounded like he had something pretty valuable. There was. Gold. But then I got Clayton's letter saying he was dead and the ranch wasn't worth much. So you came out to see for yourself? Well, if there was any gold here, I didn't see it. Well, I did a little talking around, enough to make me suspicious. And, and I got a job at Slade's office so I could keep an eye on him. Uh, just one more thing, Davy. What are the words to that song you were whistling? Well, might as well tell you since there's nothing to it anyway. Dad used to sing, Here's a little lesson for the young and for the old. A fellow is a fool to hanker after gold. And just about the time you think you're getting pretty warm, you find it's always further than you can stretch an arm. Now we're getting somewhere. I thought the song might tell me where something was hidden, but I looked everywhere and I didn't find anything. I covered all the walls from floor to ceiling, and they're all solid. You say your father mentioned in his letter that he kept a record of all his transactions? Well, he must have. He said he'd been going over his records. But I didn't find anything like that. We've got to find that record book. It'll show who Patty was selling his gold to. That's the one man who knew Patty had gold hidden. With that evidence, your man's as good as hung, Sheriff. Why, I searched the cabin from top to bottom after we found Patty, and I didn't come across anything like that. Well, Sheriff, I guess this is no time to worry about hunting business records. We can come back in the morning and find them. Huh? Right now, this boy needs a doctor. Come on, let's get him back into town. Clayton, uh, why don't you ride on ahead and have a doctor ready for us when we get there? Uh, oh, that's a good idea. I'll see you later. Yeah, all right, Ben. We'll meet you in town. Yeah, come on, boy. Yeah. Well, let's get going. Uh, can you manage the ride, Davy? Of course I can. My shoulder's all right. It doesn't hurt much now. Well, Cassidy, this was sure a good night's work. Had been for you, I never would have thought of looking for two different people. Thanks to you, we got our whistling ghost, and pretty soon we'll have our killer. Maybe sooner than you think, Sheriff. Yeah, what do you mean by that? Hoppy, I knowed you was up to something when you hustled us out of that cabin so all fired quick. Uh, what are you going to do? In about five minutes, you and I are going back to the cabin, California. Yeah. After all, we gave our killer an invitation, didn't we? And to heck with this shoulder. I'm staying with you. <laughs> He's in there, all right. See him in there? The moon on him? Why is he standing on that bench? He's tearing out the wall above the fireplace, Davy. Just what I thought he'd be doing. Wait here, I'm going in. Okay, that's enough digging for tonight. Look out, Hoppy! He's got a pickaxe! Now back to Hop Along Cassidy. Look out, Hoppy! He's got a pickaxe! All right, come down off that bench. I got some things to say to you. And keep your hand off that gun. Don't come any nearer, Cassidy. Now let's try it without the artillery. Oh! Now the law can take care of you from now on. Sheriff, light that lantern, will you? Why, Ben Clayton. I never would have thought it. Are, are you sure it's him, Cassidy? Ah, the same thing fooled both of us, Sheriff. As long as we thought the whistling ghost was the killer, it never occurred to us to suspect Clayton. Yeah, that's right, but I see it all now. Clayton was still searching for that record book. He guessed part of the verse's meaning, right? That line, and just about the time you think you're getting warm does point to the fireplace. But I looked all over up there. There isn't anything hidden in those walls. And that last line that both you and Clayton missed, Davy, you'll find it's always further than you can stretch an arm. That verse was sung to you when you were a little boy. It's just a little further than a boy's arm will reach. Why, sure, that's what Dad meant. Sheriff, if you'll help me lift this stone slab mantelpiece off, I think we'll find Patty's cash and record book inside. There. Of course. Why didn't I think of that? It never occurred to me to look up there. Well, look, <sighs> hey, will you look at that? 
Well, there must be thousands of dollars worth of gold nuggets and dust in there. I knowed you could find it, Hoppy. What? This must be the record book you were talking about, Cassidy. Uh, let me have a look at that chair. Uh-huh. I thought so. June 4th, Clayton sold two ounces. August 10th, Clayton sold ten ounces. Well, this is the proof. No wonder Clayton was frantic to get this book. Ah, <laughs> Hoppy, I knowed when we started looking for the fellow that killed Patty, he didn't have a ghost of a chance. <laughs> uh, you think so, California? Look behind you. <laughs> California, don't you know we just caught the only ghost there was around here? <laughs> Goodbye from Hopalong Cassidy. We hope you'll be back with us soon when Hoppy will again bring you more adventure and excitement. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. The Whistling Ghost was written by Bill Bates. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. <laughs>